Welcome everyone. This is a presentation by Learn Formula on helping international students prepare for the 2019 capstone and CV programs. This is a special webinar that Learn Formula has, is putting on to provide information for the international ICAP or ICAI or other students who will be attempting to do either the capstone slash CV route or getting an exemption and going into the CV route. A little bit of information. This is a presentation by Learn Formula and is not affiliated with any CPA body or is not approved by them. The idea is to provide you with information on how Learn Formula can augment your preparation towards the 2019 capstone and CV programs. In terms of our presenters, I would first like to introduce our course director, Mike Katzevin. He's been a CPA Canada marker involved in teaching technical case writing since 2014. Has a background uh, with Ernst & Young and also as a government auditor. Information on myself, Towser Dalal. I've been involved in helping Ernst & Young build their national uh, UFI CV program for a decade and have been working last three years with uh, a significant number of international students from whether they're from India, Pakistan, um, the Middle East, England, whatever, with a background, whether they're doing capstone slash CFI, some of them are uh, second time writers and helping them through the process. A little bit information on prep formula. Prep formula, so basically what we are is a supplementary personalized training program that's supposed to help you through getting your um, capstone and CFI exams done. So as you go through CP Canada and you register and go through either capstone or exemptions from capstone and into the CP, we provide augmented information in terms of technical case writing, webinars, uh, materials one-on-one -on -one to help you go and prepare for the examinations. We also provide a tax deductible receipt. A little bit of background. The last three years, we've had a very good pass rate of between 85 to 90% closer to 90% for people enrolled in our program. And in terms of site traffic, we have an incredibly high site traffic on a regular basis as people visit and review our material, our blogs and information like that. Now, let's talk a little bit about the makeup of the capstone exams, well, modules itself. So capstone one, it starts off with, you have a weekend, workshop where they discuss you know what what are the expectations you get randomly assigned into groups of four or five students from a local area that you reside in and it's really a 30 to 50 page case that you are supposed to do over an eight week period you submit three assignments at the end of weeks one four and seven and then you do a group presentation at the end to a panel of cpas and you answer questions there are two intakes basically because of the large volume of students. There is one that starts end of April and one that starts middle of May, May and it runs for eight weeks. The next is uh, Capstone 2, which the key date is uh, July 21st. And for both of these modules, they expect about 15 hours of additional prep time. So for Capstone 1, you're doing a lot of research preparing for assignments as as you work in teams of four and five you're doing your own piece pieces and then you put together and do your presentations every week or submissions every week or or two weeks you get feedback and that's how you process through capstone and capstone is one large 30 to 50 page case and that case basically is to help you prepare for day one of the cp and the case could be on anything and the way it works is that the day one exam is a four hour exam and that exam is going to basically be 
an extension of the capstone case. So whatever the capstone case is baked on, they will extrapolate and say, okay, now, you know, the capstone case is about whatever company and you're doing um, a presentation, let's say, the presentation is as of 2016, let's say. Now they will propel you two years, four years into the future and say now the same company is now in a different position. Either they've grown or, um, you know, they've consolidated or whatever, or, or they've kind of it's gone into a new market and now they want you to do some kind of analysis based on that new information but the same stakeholders the users the background all of that information is the same as a capstone case but now you're going to answer specific required based on this future information or situation that you've been presented in so the case itself and the exam the two slightly different things and what they do is when you're in capstone two so what capstone two is it's a seven to eight week case writing course which you're practicing prior cv cases day one day two day three cases and preparing for the actual final exam so what they do is during capstone two they will create two other similar simulations for day one and say, okay, you know, again, you're two years or three years in the future and they will give you a slightly different scenario and they'll make you practice that four hour case. So they'll make up two mocks like that for you to prepare. And then the exam itself is a third one, which is, a, which is again, a different variation, but it's based on the same case, the same information, all the same background. Now, how does prep formula help you prepare for this? Okay, so the key here is that we go through the case and the steps that you are needed to prepare and present throughout this process, throughout the eight weeks. So what we do is we have a two hour webinar that will help you prepare for the capstone one case. CPAs outside of your group are not allowed to help you. But what we do is we give you a guideline as to what are the, some of the key steps you go, how do you analyze stuff? How do you review the case in general? What do you need to focus on as you hand in your assignments? So we do a two hour webinar, two weeks before the actual start of capstone one. And that webinar will take you step by step through a sample case and say, this is what you need to pay attention to when you're doing your assignments. And that has gone extremely well the last couple of years in helping our students prepare and go through Capstone 1. And then for the CFE exam itself, we have an intense, another two hour webinar that will help you again go through now, when you're doing the four hour case, these are specific required that you're asked to answer. How do you go about analyzing the case, setting it up and do it, and preparing for it? A little bit of information on the CFE itself. It's that basically it's three days long. It doesn't test provincial tax laws. It's a straight pass fail exam. No scores, you're just given a pass fail. They have medal winners and 50 people on the honor roll and after that it's just you passed or failed it tests all six competency areas and depending on your the areas that you choose financial reporting management accounting are mandatory for everyone and then you choose one of the other areas of audit performance management finance or tax as a key area that you're going to focus on, which will be the day two. So your day one is a four hour case based on capstone one. Your day two is a five hour case. Partially it's based in your elective area. And then day three are three 80 minutes or three cases adding up to 240 minutes. The exam itself is done electronically. You bring in your laptop and you access a particular um, what what they used to call secure exam in the past and you go in and write that within 
a Word and Excel kind of spreadsheet you use. And you have also access to the CPA Canada Handbook and the Tax Act. Uh, so you can refer to that while you're prepare while you are writing the exam. So we talked a little bit about day one is four days in length. And what we also do is our students that register with Prep Formula can actually go and look at. So what we have done is because we do the webinar for the, the capstone case, before we also we do the webinar for the day one. So you can see a sample of how we help students with say the 2016, 2017 case or 2018 case. Now 2019 will be a brand new case that'll come out at the end of April. Some of the key dates are listed here. For the exam, there are two, uh, there's one writing in 2019, and then the C fee is going to be offered twice in 2020. So obviously, capstone one and two will kind of predate those. The day one exam focuses on enabling competencies, problem solving, decision making, ethical behavior, communication. And those are the things that we will help you focus on. So especially if now you're getting an exemption from the day one capstone uh, from the capstone one, you will still need to understand the case, go through it on your own or with a group of friends or buddies who are getting an exemption and understand the case and get this information, solve the case in order to prepare yourself for it the day one exam. So that is where again prep formula can help you. So let's talk a little bit about the day two case. The day two it's a five hour case and it's going to be a hugely complicated case and part of the case is a common role which means there'll be some financial reporting or management accounting points to discuss and the rest of the case will focus on your chosen area. So if you have chosen, for example, assurance, there'll be questions on assurance. Finance, questions on finance. PM, questions on PM, okay? And so basically the way, and the third day, it's three short questions. They could be 70 to 90 minutes in length, adding up to 240 minutes. And they can be all over all six areas, okay? And the way they mark the exam, is each of these areas that are questioned on the exam, on day two and day three, for example. So let's say on day two, you have, they'll have, you know, over the five hours, they'll ask you 14, 15 specific things to do. They call assessment opportunities. And what you're going to do is probably say half of them are in the common area, FR management, the other half are in your elective. So each one, so it might, in FR, it might be something like, you know, there's an inventory adjustment or there's a non-monetary transaction, which you have to discuss, do the technical, discuss it, and do the adjusting entry. Okay, or in management accounting, they'll tell you, okay, you know, we are planning on um, outsourcing something or we are planning or we are planning on building something and these are our two options, evaluate them for us. So those are kind of each required or assessment opportunities. And then you get into your elective role, which could be assurance. So they'll say, okay, discuss the risk implications in this audit, discuss materiality approach, procedures. You know, maybe we want to do some special reports. You know, in finance, you could be doing cash flows, budgeting, calculating weighted average cost of capital. In performance management, they could ask you, you know, things like, like I said, outsourcing or not, or um, they will ask you, okay, here's um, our incentive program. Evaluate whether how appropriate the incentive program is. You know, it's our mission aligned with uh, our business, discuss that. So those are some of the things that they can ask. And that is similar to be asking you the same things on day three, but there'll be shorter cases, okay? And on day three, they will bring in a little bit of tax strategy, and also finance. So the biggest challenge for you is, how do I take my technical that I'm preparing and integrate it into answering the case? So that's where you have to take your leap from technical to baking it and answering the user needs in the case. 
So now that I've given you a little bit of a flavor of what the actual exam is, what Capstone is. Now Capstone 2 is basically a case writing course. So what you're going to do is you're going to go in for eight weeks and the first weekend is a workshop again and they'll tell you okay this is what the CFE D1, D2, D3 cases are like and this is how you should probably read a case, plan it, outline. So it's a kind of a weekend case writing workshop and then after that you're on your own you go and start writing cases and practicing them and most of the time in the eight weeks you have to submit either a D1 or a D2 case every week along with a couple of D3 cases and CP Canada marks it for you most of them and they return it not not all of them are mandatory you do it while you're working and they have a specific format where they mark it for you know all whatever however many four or six thousand people that are writing uh, in capstone 2 and you get your case marked along with standardized templated feedback so now discussing about how prep can help you prepare well as as you can see Mike has been you know a marker at the marking center he's also done so, a lot of testing and all our mentors that help you one-on-one -on -one, have marking experience, extensive marking experience and background. A lot of us going way back into the UFI, which is uh, prior to 2015 CFI. So everybody has extensive background. We, some of us have different strengths. We have specific people who help with tax or finance, specific with assurance. I myself spend a lot of time with um, international writers because again, with your background, how we approach case writing is again very very different because those that have already gone through some of the processes in Canada they are they have been exposed to a lower level of case writing that's similar to the exam but for international students a lot of times it's the first time you're seeing the CPA Canada case writing way so it's not about that you don't have the skill set to do it, you need someone to show you how to go about doing it. So as you prepare for the exam, in the months leading up to it, normally we recommend, if you're writing the September CFE, you start your preparation now. What, do you, what are the key things you need to do? Whether you're doing Capstone 1 or 2 or not, we will discuss that a bit later. But first you want to build a technical foundation. Now if you look at the CPA competency map, there's about 1800 topics in there but again they break the topics down into a b c level so what we do at prep is we will take the key topics in fr assurance management finance tax whatever and we will prepare and tell you okay these are some of the topics that you need to be really strong in for the exam these are the topics that have recurred consistently over year over year on the exam so if you take, for example, 100% of the entire syllabus, I, as a student, am looking for somebody to shrink it down to 35% of it. So as I study over the next eight, 10 months, I want material, I want videos, I want whatever PDF, whatever I'm seeing, I want it condensed, concise to the point, what I need to know for the exam. That is the most important things in terms of technical. You can get your technical handbook information from anywhere. CPA Canada themselves provides you with their database. But what are the important topics to study? Once you start doing the important topics like RevRec, intangibles, inventory, financial instruments, assets, you know, then how do you go about studying them? So at PrEP, we will not only guide you as to how do you shrink the syllabus into the one third that you need to know. Then we will explain how do you go about piecing yourself. You know, do you study seven, eight hours a week technical from now on? How do you balance that? Then how do you practice some actual number crunching? We give you some of those, some of that information to do that. And then the most critical component of the technical part is we have over 100, 150 videos and we do two every week. 
And these videos are based on key topics that are very important. So in financial reporting, again, we will talk about, you know, the key IFRS topics, the key ASPI topics, inventory, rev rec, assets, R&D, all of these things. And what we will do is we will create every Saturday, Tuesday, Thursday night at eight o'clock. We have these live webinars, they're recorded so you can view them later. And we go through the technical, we explain what the technical is supposed to be, how you're supposed to interpret it. We apply some number crunching to it to show you how to do the adjusting entries or calculations. And then we take a random case, one of our own prep cases, we have a database of over 50 practice cases in different areas. And we say, okay, if this shows up on the case, how do I discuss, let us say the R&D criteria, does it meet capital expense, blah, 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 figure out the amounts, the entry, and now how does it fit into the case, what they want me to do. So these are some of the key things that the webinars will teach you. And we have them twice a week so as you're doing your study plan again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, this week you're doing you know financial reporting, you're doing inventory, R&D, capital assets, for example. Okay, well, we have these three webinars. So add them to your study plan and then review the webinars if you need to. So that is the key aspect of our technical part. Now, we are going into our case writing. Now, some of the webinars that we do put on Initially, in the first few months, like in the fall and winter, a lot of them will be focused on technical and then how you use the technical on cases. Then, part of our key part of our program is a one on one. So, what happens is within our program that you purchase, you have a certain number of credits that you can use to work with a mentor like Mike, myself, or there are lots of other uh, CPAs with extensive teaching and knowledge in working with students across the country with different backgrounds. So what I would do, for example, myself is, okay, I say, okay, here's a basic case. And I would pick a basic one and say financial reporting and assurance if you're an assurance student or financial reporting and say management if you're going the PM route and say, read it and try and answer it. And before you even do that, we have a sample of demos to give you some idea of what to start thinking of in terms of your thought process. Okay, so what will happen is, as I go through this, I will give you the 90 minute case. As you're working one on one with your mentor on your first case or two, okay, normally what we do is we try and give you a couple of group examples so that you get an idea of, you know, this is what a case looks like, this is what they ask you, this is the information they give you. And this is how you go about doing the solution. Then you start working one on one. Then you will start. So the the best feature of prep formula is this one on one. How do you take the technical that anybody can do the technical? And especially international students know their technical really well. They know how to do the adjusting entries very well. But it is how you apply it, which is what the webinars will show you, which is a very important feature of our program. And they are live or they are recorded, which means you can go back, see them once, see them twice, whatever you want and learn and choose which ones. And then the case writing. If I sit in a classroom with 30, 40, 50 people and explain this is how you do a case, that doesn't help. Even international students, they have different backgrounds. Some can get see one or two sample cases and pick up certain things. Some need a little more time. So accordingly, I will work with that individual. Some people may actually need help reading, outlining, planning from the very first case. That is how we work with each individual student to your specific needs. And that also has to start in January or so. And in from there, you're, in January or so, you start your case writing and you're balancing your time with technical updating also. So as you move along, that is the key part, the one-on-one. -on -one. 
that mentoring aspect. That is where you use the credit. So you do a case, whether you write it out or you read and plan it and submit it to me, a market, give you in-depth feedback. My feedback will be, what did you have to do? Why did you do something right or wrong? What were you supposed to pay attention? What did you miss? I'll give you examples of how you should have written it. If you did part of it, how did you write it to take it to the competent level? What should your thought process have been? Then I will also give you examples of how to do a concise answer. Okay, so in the beginning, the way I will focus on helping you is, even if a case is an 80 minute case, yes, come September, come the CFI, an 80 minute case, you're probably going to spend, let us say 25, 28 minutes reading, planning, outlining, and the rest writing it. You cannot do that in January or March. In January or March, I will give you two hours to do that so that you're learning how to do these skills. You need time to learn how to read it, plan it, outline it, figure things out. And then you need time to write it because in the beginning your writing skills are poor. You're writing too much, even if you're writing the relevant things. You may go off topic. So, but if I give you enough time to do all of that, then when I get your paper, I can see what you're doing, where you're going right, where you're going wrong, how do you going to improve? And then in that one hour Skype session, we go over all of that. Once I give you your marked feedback, I tell you how to improve. The most important aspect of case writing is debriefing. Once you get the paper back, what am I going to do? First of all, with Towser, how did I go and spend that hour? What did he teach me? What did I have to learn? And now I take that and I spend another couple of hours and say, okay, did I have technical weaknesses? Build on it. Case writing, what do I need to do? That debriefing. And again, I will explain to you what uh, what debriefing entails. We'll give you a document. You need to, these are the 15, 20, 25 things you need to pay attention to in debriefing. And as you get better, the amount of time you're going to spend on debriefing will decrease because now you're going to read, plan, outline better and therefore you're going to write better. You're going to write more concisely and your time management will be much better. So if in January, February or March your debriefing is two hours for an 80 minute case, as the summer progresses that two hours becomes an hour and a half, an hour to half an hour or even less. And I will teach you the debriefing skills also. I will give you a checklist. This is what you pay attention to when you're debriefing. So you do a case with me and then I give you two or three based on your background, based on your elective and say, okay, here's about two or three you practice over the next two or three weeks. Then you come back and do another one with me. And that is the cornerstone, cornerstone of our program, the one-on-one, -on -one, which you will not get anywhere else. Next aspect is, once you finish Capstone 1, or if you're skipping Capstone 1, I've explained to you how to use our resources for Capstone 1. There is about a 10-day gap between Capstone 1 and 2. What we do is we have a 7-day mock kind of you know, intense boot camp where we focus on key technical topics, updates. We spend time on the day 1 case. We spend time on the day 2 case. We spend time on the day 3 cases. And that is live webinars for everybody across the country. And those people that cannot attend the webinars, obviously they're recorded and you can watch them later. So a lot of times it'll be, okay, write this say 2017 or 2018 or 2016, day two case. You write it, it doesn't get marked by your, uh, but what we do is we do a three hour take up of it. And an intense take up. This is what we consistently see students doing correct, wrong. This is how you improve. This is how you write a competent answer. We go through and then it's a live interaction. You can ask questions and answers. That is like a seven day boot camp. Okay. But again, the key part is even though it's done as a group, we have a lot of time in there for individual questions and answers. So normally the way that session works is we have two people on our side doing it, one person teaching it and the other one answering questions because 
in a three hour session, we could have easily have about two, 300 questions from students. So that is what occurs between capstone one and two. Again, and that's part of your package. Now for capstone two itself, as you're going through capstone two, you're doing cases with CPA Canada. If you're not doing cases, whether you're doing or not doing cases, you will still continue to use your credits from your package, you have 14 credits, you will continue to use them, or you can buy more, depends on the individual, and submit cases for marking. So what I normally do is, I create an eight week plan for my students, from say middle or third, third week or towards the end of July, till the CFE, and say, okay, here's about 15 cases, you can pick whatever you want to submit for marking. These are key. So depending on if you're assurance students, here are some other ones. PM, here are some other ones. Go. And every four days or so, there's one you can submit. And you can pick and choose which ones you want to submit. And again, there's a mix. Day one, day two, day three cases for all backgrounds. So even if you're doing capstone two, you still can do that. And some of the cases that I pick are actually capstone two cases because that's the best case to mark. So it'll be like a 2017 or 18 CFE case because my marking will be very specific to your needs. Capstones, all they're going to do is they're going to turn around and say, okay, based on here are the metrics, here's the template. You should have said for this particular FR topic, we needed you to talk about ABC. Did you talk about it? No. So this is how you ended up. I will explain to you. Why did you have to read it that way? What did you have to pick out of it? How did you have to write out your answer? And then give you examples of how you should have done it in a concise way. So that is the difference in getting the capstone feedback and getting specific feedback. So again, if you're in capstone, you're getting both. If you're not in capstone, if you're going to skip capstone, obviously, again, you're saving $3,000 by skipping both capstones. So what we strongly suggest is you use credits or buy more credits, which are cheap, it's $50 a credit, to do more cases one-on-one. -on -one. And what will happen is if you're not doing capstone two, then you sit down beforehand with me in July and say, okay, I need to simulate capstone two. So let us set up you know, a plan where you'll mark a case, say once a week for me, and then I'll be writing two or three. You can just, Capstone 2 schedule is available publicly. So you can actually mirror that and write cases. You can do cases on your own and you can submit cases for marking with your mentor. And that is how, as an international student, you build your skill set towards the exam. Now, obviously, we have what we call a pass guarantee, meaning what? Until you pass a CFE, you have access to prep. So you have access to all the technical, all the webinars. The only thing is as you use up your one-on-one -on -one credits in your package, okay, so your package comes with 14 credits. One credit entitles you to, mar to do a case, one day three or a short case, say with me, you write it, I mark it, and then we do a one hour Skype. That'll use up two credits. As you get better and get closer to the exam, a lot of people don't need the one hour debrief Skype. They may need a half an hour. They may need a 15 minute. Sometimes all they need is a five minute phone call. And the way we work is I don't punch the clock. I don't have a clock. So if you call me up or you WhatsApp me or whatever and say, can I talk to you for five minutes? I wrote this case. I just have one or two things to clarify. No problem. Again, we are available for that. You're stressed or whatever, pick up the phone and talk to me. Talk to Mike, talk to whoever, somebody's available. We will support you. That will not go towards counting as your credit. Yeah, now if you want to spend 15 minutes, half hour on specific technical topics or case writings, whatever, yes, we, we, we do that. But you know, if you, once in a while call up for a five, 10 minute conversation. That's above and beyond. That is the service we provide. So again, you know, that's a pass guarantee. So if, if by chance, say there are people, obviously there's no guarantee to pass. A lot of students will ask me, you know, if I study according to what you tell me, do everything according to the book, will I pass? Sorry, I'm not gonna answer that. Just like I cannot predict what's gonna be on the exam, 
I cannot predict whether if you do everything right, you're still going to pass or fail. Chances are a lot higher if you'll pass, but sometimes, you know, things go wrong. Okay, so again, the following year, now, but what you have to realize is by doing the one-on-one -on -one and practicing the webinars, all of that, you build a very strong platform. So a lot of times, even our repeat writers, they just fail, or if they fail, they built a very strong foundation. So the following year, they all they have to do is that little bit top up to clear the exam now. Okay. Now, I had one or two slides in there which discussed, you know, how the exam has got four levels of marking and things like that. What we do is once you sign up and as we go along and we, as we start case writing and you go get into the spring, we will discuss more in depth how that process works, how you have to answer each question, how they mark each required or assessment opportunity, what is reaching competent, what is a competent answer and things like that so don't worry about that now right now it is what do i need at a fundamental level the support structure to get through this exam and that is the key things that i want to message i want to drive home to you today and as the summer rolls we do focus on you know here are the key technical areas to focus on we will have a session either during that mock seven day or in the summertime where we will focus on here are the key new technical topics IFRS 15 IFRS 9 whatever they are or whether there could be some tax changes we have a four-hour in-depth tax webinar extremely good by Jason Fleming the best instructor in town he worked with me at Ernst & Young and he's been teaching at York for the last over a dozen years he's even authored textbooks you do his four-hour webinar, and that's more than enough. You actually don't even need all of it, but you're set for tax. So all of your bases are covered, even from a technical perspective, going into the exam. So again, to reiterate, what are some of the key things that you're going to get? The weekly webinars, the technical material. Plus, we have a slew of about 50, 60 cases that you can practice between, let's say, January, February, right up until July or so. And then a lot of people focus on practicing the last four CFEs. But again, as if you're my student and you're doing assurance, and I see you have fundamental weaknesses, there are specific cases I can give you and say, here are you know, past UFI cases from 2010, 11, 12, 13. Or there are these, you know, X56 prep cases that will help you focus on whatever it is. You know, how do I do special reports, procedures, risks? Those are your weaknesses. Or if you have weaknesses in management accounting, just doing quants or qualitative, there are specific areas that we can help you focus on. You are not going to get this elsewhere. That is the whole idea of the mentor, the one-on-one, -on -one, the marking, the personalized schedule, okay? So those are some of the things that I want you to think about when you are looking into getting extra help. So whether you're doing capstone one or not, and capstone two, if you're not doing it, then you definitely need the one-on-one. -on -one. A lot of times my students will get only when you're getting a day one or day two case marked then you are getting it marked by it's going to take two or two and a half of your credits but most of my students that are in capstone one and two will only get one day one or day two case marked because they're already getting a bunch marked in in capstone and i've already taught them how to even self mark their cases Okay, we also have a specific person who actually marks the day one case for the CFI. We he comes and works with us during the summer. So what happens is now a lot of our my students I can refer to him to get a day one case marked if they want practice. So if you're skipping capstone one and two, 
then you definitely want a couple of day one, day two cases marked. So when you're saving $3,000 on capstone one and two, then spend some of that money towards doing additional marking. It's worth your while. And the way you do it is you set up the study plan eight weeks before or, you know, from May you can. It depends on the individual student. And say, okay, this is how I'm going to map out my summer depending on my work schedule and things, whether I'm doing capstone or not. And we can, like I said, we can mimic capstone too. Even if you're not doing capstone too, the schedule is available. You can map out and say, okay, I'm going to mirror capstone too. And within that, I'm going to get so many of the cases marked by the mentor, so many of the cases done by myself. The resources are available. Reach out and speak to people like Mike, speak to people like myself or other people for any additional help. We also have these prep forums that we set up. So we have forums where, you know, students create, there are these groups that are created. For example, we have a repeat writer group, an international writer group. We have um, assurance writers or PM writers so people can exchange ideas, discussions, whatever. We have a capstone one group where people will talk about different ideas among students also. So it's like a support group system that you can, that this is just for among students. So there are a lot of resources that are available. Okay, so again, you know, we have on, on the slide, the prices are given. There's a promotional coupon to take advantage of for the Prep Plus program for 14 credits. And there's an expiry period on there. If you have questions, please contact Mike or myself for further information. And we are more than happy to chat with you. Or you can also email me or Mike. And we will be happy to provide you with any other information. Most important thing to remember is you keep the fundamental blocks in place from January or whenever or from now chances are 85, 90%, you will succeed. Even if you don't succeed, which happens, you have built a very strong foundation. You have learned the right case writing skills, the debriefing skills. You know, then in the next year, all you need is you're not going to go start from January. You need fine tuning in the summer. So you're already 70% there. You need that extra 10% to go over the hurdle. And you can use a lot of the prep resources again because we'll update everything new for the 2000, the following year. The only thing is, if you have run out of your credits, you can purchase a few to do, you know, how many cases you think you need to do. But again, our aim is, you know, all the extra webinars, the mocks, everything that we do to give you this information, how to go about it. When I debrief, I'm not just every time doing the same thing. I'm teaching you the skills needed so that after you do two, three, four debriefs, you can go and do it on your own. You don't need to waste your credits on extra debriefing. You can use them to get extra cases marked. The whole idea is for me to teach you the skills you need then to go off on your own because you will maybe one out of four cases or five cases you will do with me. I need to give you the skills that the other cases that you're doing, you can do it on your own. You can solve it. How do you improve? All of those skills you will have. You can mark them on your own. Same thing with the webinars. The webinars are there to actually show you how to apply the information. And that is what we're trying to get at. You know, another very important part that we do is we take the Board of Examiners report every year and we analyze it and I do a webinar on it. What are some of the consistent mistakes that students make on the CFE? How do they improve? There are fundamental things. One of the most trivial things I'll tell you is 30% of the students do not know how to do adjusting journal entries. So when you're doing financial reporting, and you have to fast financial reporting or management accounting. All, if there are seven or eight questions on FR, probably six out of the eight will require you to do adjusting journal entries. And if you don't do them, you're not going to pass financial reporting. 
but a lot of them are relatively fundamental adjusting journal entries. So again, if I'm consistently showing you how to do them, then guess what? You have an advantage over 30% of the people writing the exam. And those are some of the things that we keep on driving home with the students. So if you want to take advantage of that, prep is the place to come. I wish you all the best.